back to Bionic Life. My name is Kevin and we are moving on to some machining. I actually call it fab machining. Copyright, trademark. This is not high tolerance stuff. It's kind of lay it out as you go. But I think using the mill to remove the amount of material I need to remove from the wings, the horizontal part of the four-way splitter, is justifiable. Grinding would take forever and I'm hoping that an indexable uh, cutter head will speed up the process, make things a little more consistent, and I'm hoping faster. I'm gonna show you a diagram what I have in mind. We're gonna get to laying this thing out. Let's get started. The goal for today is to get this uh, AR400 plate, one inch thick, nine inch by six inch, formed up into a horizontal portion of the splitting wedge. We're gonna start by removing some material here on either end. The angle of those cuts are to be determined. We'll then put a bevel on the one edge, and that will become the cutting edge for the horizontal portion of the splitting wedge. The angle of that bevel is going to be approximately 30 degrees. We'll move on to the vertical portion of the wedge. It is going to have a slot milled in it. This slot will attach the mechanism that moves the blade up and down, and we will also put a cutting edge. And this cutting edge is going to come back eh, just shy of an inch, so that'll be about one inch, if that makes sense. And I'll show you why here in a minute. We'll show the top view. From the top, you'll see that this milled portion for the cutting action will be on the center line of the wedge. And it's gonna come back about one inch. Once the milling is complete, we will take the horizontals and make them up to the vertical portion of the wedge. And they will be positioned slightly rear of the leading edge of the main wedge so that this portion of the wedge comes into contact well after this portion of the wedge, if that makes sense. This gap back here is what will give stabilization to the wedge and the vertical spine that I had so much trouble welding up earlier. I know I showed the diagram and how I want it to work, and here's how I'm gonna arrive at the angles that I want. I want this edge, let's remove that, I want this edge right here, this will all obviously be sharp. I'll have this edge engage Shortly after the sharpened cutting edge on the vertical part engages the wood. So I actually want this part right here to engage about even with this. So we're going to lay out our angles. Yep, we're right at six degrees. I'm going to call that good. So that'll be our angle right there. Not super abrupt. <laughs> I should add, I'm probably going to be playing a lot of music because I don't have three phase power. I have a 10 horsepower rotary phase converter and it makes a lot of racket. And on top of that, we have a horse and a half motor on top. So we have a lot of things going on and it's pretty noisy. I don't think I want to bore you with all of that. So we'll probably have music going on in the background. No, those DROs don't work. Hopefully these that I picked up at a sale will work. I'll get those mounted up eventually. The wiring is kind of goofy, it's backwards. I have this in high range. And this is a variable speed head. When I put it in low, it actually spins the way it's supposed to. I'm gonna show you here. I don't know if that shows up right. It's spinning the correct way. There. And there we're touched off. I think we're gonna take very light passes. this edge pretty well be burred. Still have this one to do. Then we're going to set this up in the, the mill once more. 
and this will be, I'll pair them up like I did the last time, and this will be resting against the bottom of the vise. I'll we'll transfer this angle onto this side. The edges are all deburred and <clears throat> I did it with a file only because I'm on the bed of the mill and I don't like abrasive discs on in the area of the mill. You can see where that round impacted in the opening shots and it penetrated the mill scale and I think that's that's it. I mean there's no other than the mill scale there's no dent or divot there. I don't know how else to explain it. You can't Camera doesn't show anything, but you can see even here how thick that mill scale, mill scale was. And I'm pretty sure that's what sparked when you saw the spark fly. Pretty sure that was it right there. A little bit of rust there from uh, sitting down on the vise, I guess, overnight. But yeah, there you have it. And this vise is not going to open up wide enough. And we got what five inches between the jaws roughly so we're going to take off I don't know if you can see it uh, that'll give us better than six inches so we're going to take these jaws off we can lay that uh, vertical piece right in the vise right here I'm not sure what happened to the footage that I had laying this uh, slot for the adjustment mechanism that goes onto the bottom of the vertical wedge but basically, I came in from the one edge about an inch and a half. I came in the other side, inch and a half. Came up from the bottom an inch and a half. I center punched. I center punched right there and right there. And I ended up drilling two more holes here and here. So I had four holes an inch apart. The slot is four inches, basically from edge to edge. And it's one inch wide. So that's what I have. We're going to lay it in the vise, drill it, and mill it. And that'll allow me to put a three-quarter inch bolt with a Delron sleeve around the bolt for wear. I don't know if it's a good idea, but that's what I'm going to do. I can always change this out to a one-inch bolt down the road. That quarter inch drill bit, ah oh man, I must have had a little too high a speed. It got a little blue and it broke the corners. Now you can see it right, right here when I get it to come into focus. I'm gonna touch it up on the drill doctor and have it ready for the next time I need it. That AR400 does drill pretty hard, but you have to feed it kind of at a fast rate because if you let it sit and rub, you end up getting a, uh, a work hardened spot, and that's no good either. It's a little windy out. That should be good enough. I'll know the next time I go to use it. I'm going to toss it back in the drill index. This is only a three quarter inch, but I like this wheel, and my grinding wheel doesn't do a good enough job, so I will take this and flip it on its side and sharpen the one inch drill on this diamond wheel from the underside just don't stick your hands up there this thing's going to be turning really slow when we start drilling with this and this again it came in a box of the surplus tool i got at an auction so if i end up screwing this up i'm not too worried about it they had already ground this down so i don't even know how straight this will turn as long as it makes a hole, I'll be okay with it. Well, so much for that. I twisted that right off. J.C. Penny to the rescue. Huh. Found these on the road. I honestly, I don't even remember J.C. Penny selling tools. It's coming out. Here it comes. Let's see what else I got for a one-inch bit. This would have been a better choice. I think I have a call it for this. That's, this is one inch as well. 
We'll go put a sharper edge on this and see if we have any luck with that. We'll give that a whirl. Found a call it that fits. The reason I didn't go a lot faster and a lot harder is I have no more carbide inserts for this cutter here. So what I got is what I got and I didn't want to break them or anything like that so I took it easy on it. I hogged everything out using that indexable insert. I have a change in plans. I'm going to use this carbide. It's nice and long. It seems reasonably sharp. Eh, a little bit of rust on it for some reason. But we're going to give this a whirl just to clean up those edges and open that up to just about an inch. Hopefully this works. All right, here we are. Let's see what we got. One inch, 25 thousandths. Good enough. All right, so first thing we need to do is figure out what, how much travel I have. And to do that, we're gonna mark off this end of the vertical part of the wedge for the area that we need for the mechanism. And then eight inches for the beam. And that's the minimum that we have to mill. We may build, mill just a little lower, just in case I have a little more uh, play down here than I think with the mechanism. I want to make sure I have enough traversing from side to side. And for setup, I basically use one, two, three blocks as standoffs. I haven't got it clamped down yet. I also use five eight style pins for the alignment. Now some people are going to say, oh, you need to indicate it in. Yeah, probably should indicate it, but we've got a lot of mill scale on there. And this is fab machining, not machining, precision machining. This is make it sharp. And I, again, I don't think I'm going to make it razor sharp. I'm going to make it pretty sharp, but I may leave like a, I don't know, a sixteenth of a flat on this, on the cutting edge. We'll just see. I don't want it too sharp so somebody brushes against it and gets cut, but I want it sharp enough to be effective. So that's the goal. We're going to figure out how much play, how much traverse I have with my power feed. And that's limited by that stop there and that stop right there. And I just want to figure out how much travel we have back and forth so that, uh, you know, mid-cut I don't have to readjust. We're going to lay this beam out with some soapstone and then we'll know how much of the wedge we need to, to sharpen and then we'll know how to set it up. How many among you or your kids would be able to read this right here? If I didn't write it up there, how many would be able to read this right here? It's like a secret code. Anyway, right here we have the adjustment, the amount that we're going to need probably. We may not need all of this. We'll see. We'll definitely need 8 inches for the beam. That leaves us 19 inches from this mark here to there. Now let me get it level up. I'm probably going to go ahead and sharpen 20 because it doesn't matter if that that end is an inch uh, below the beam. That's okay. I think I'm going to sharpen 20 inches here. Now, we need to make sure we have 20 inches of travel between the stops, which we have 
almost 20. I think I'm gonna move a stop slightly. There's a set of gears on the head and then that nut there acts as a worm drive to rotate the head down. But pretend this hammer is the head. We're gonna pivot it about 30 degrees. And that's the angle we'll put on our vertical wedge section. All right, there we have it. 30 degrees. Eh, it's not so many minutes and seconds, but we're at 30 degrees. We'll tighten those bolts up and then we'll go ahead and install our cutter. We'll make sure that the wedge can be sharpened all the way up here. Make sure we have a good position. We may have to square it up with these dowel pins in, the, in this T-slot and then adjust from there. Just wanna make sure it's gonna make our complete cut without having to move everything after we started the process. I think these cutters are gonna be okay to at least start. Yeah, they'll be okay for the first couple passes. We may have to change them. They were sparking pretty good. This one's wore a little bit. I don't know if that shows up. Sort of see that edge is a little bit polished. That's what happens, see this nick here in this cutter. That's what happens when you have an insert break and you got a pretty heavy feed rate. So I'm going to run the table all the way till the cutter is about right here. Um, then I'm going to mark the table and that mark is going to be where this end stops, but on the other side. Does that make sense? So we'll be coming in and cutting the other side. I can only mill this in this position. So that means I have to flip this piece of stock over on the other side. I can't tilt the head the other direction and mill it on the back side. Hopefully that makes sense. We're gonna get at it. Good old dead blow hammer. It's got shot in it, and when you hit it, it doesn't bounce back. So I'm just trying to make sure we're tight against these dowel pins. We're gonna touch off on this, back or out and start feeding in. That little shiny spot right there. I'm gonna get the frame rate to disagree for a minute. We're gonna go ahead and back it over. Throw the feed. It's gonna make that little line right there. We're gonna drop it about 50 thousandths after we get to the end. And then we'll make our first pass. I think I got a little carried away and sharpened it a little bit more. Ah, I think I left about a 30 second of an edge. We're gonna file it off and take a look, but I think that's gonna be good enough for the mill. Yeah, I think we're in really good shape for the edge. I'm real happy with that. Yeah, a few little burrs, we'll take those off. Hit them with a the grinder once I get it outside. Next step will be sharpening the wings. So we're gonna get these set up in the mill to mill off the cutting edges. They're gonna be milled straight like this. The cutting edge will be straight. But these wedges, the wings, are gonna be canted forward so that the tips will engage and then have a shearing motion in it. That's the plan. The back side of the wedge 
is actually going to ride on that vertical support. Pretend that's this on the on the beam that we showed in a previous video. And that will give the, the wedge stability. So me being me, I need to actually mark. Because this these are directional. Once I mill the cutting edge on them, they're directional. So I'm going to mark the cutting edges right now. So that I have a left and a right. Because these will be a left and a right when I'm completed. So we'll get him set up. We're going to mill one at a time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to mill. It'll be milled down to a point at a 30 degree angle. That's the plan. This will probably take a couple passes. The cutter is only an inch and a half. So it'll probably, when we get near the end, I'll probably have to make it a double pass on it. But we'll see how this progresses. Again, we're going to use a dead blow, get it up against those dowel pins. They're pretty snug right there. Feels pretty good. All right, we're gonna start milling. We got her touched off. We're gonna take a full revolution on the cut. Machining marks from the cutter are deeper than that groove. It looks like there's a groove there in the lot, but that's there's no appreciable step there at all. Good enough for a log splitter. And like everything else, I'm gonna double check this. This will be the left as you're standing at the controls looking towards the splitter. And this will be the right. But as you can see. That's kind of the angle they'll have. Uh, we can pick it up in a T slot. But that's what we want. I guess the other thing I'm going to do is chamfer these edges right here. I'll set the head to 45 degrees and uh, we'll set them up on here. And that was, that'll be easier than grinding. I'm going to do the bottom and the top so I get good, good penetration on this weld. We'll be back with all the parts done. I know it looks like there's a lot of space back here behind that. I had to set the head at 41 to get enough travel to put the chamfer on. That's all the movement I had. That's as far back as I could uh, move the, the part. There's about 250,000, so I brought it forward to make the cut to feed into the cutter head. We got the chamfers on. All right, next uh, thing we're going to do, I'm not exactly sure. There are several steps I need to do, but it's either going to be removing the mill scale off of these guys. Um, I have a couple ideas on how to do that. Or I may start working on the beam and making the vertical support for the tail end or the cap end of the cylinder rod. <laughs> 